Thank you. Oh, it's on. Yep. Uh, thank you, Laird, uh, and uh, good evening, everybody. It's uh, great to uh, to be with you and just to be able to share a little uh, bit about uh, the work that I do um, here in Lovian. Um I think it was almost five years ago to the date uh, that I uh, sat here um, with uh, Neil, who interviewed me, and uh, Kate Forbes, uh, who is no longer Forbes, but has just got married uh, last Thursday. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, Kate is a member of the Free Church um, from Dingwell, um, and is a MSP uh, for the largest constituency in the whole of Western Europe. Goes from Aviemore all the way up to Sky, so she covers a lot of sheep. Um, and uh, she is also uh, the person that decides how much money uh, we get to spend on different areas. At present, she is uh, the Cabinet Secretary for Finance. And it was interesting, um, on that evening, we talked a wee bit about our own journey, how we both had just been elected to the Scottish Parliament, uh, and how we saw our hopes going over the next uh, five years. So Kate has kind of... Uh, been uh, accelerated up into, uh, into government, and I am a uh, lowly backbencher um, serving my time. So I suppose what I want to do is try to divide this into two areas, because for me, I think there are, are two areas that I seek to uh, serve the people of Lovian um, and serve God, if you like, within the parliament. Uh, and the first of all is, is the one that perhaps doesn't get um, the coverage, um, or if you get much coverage, but any coverage at all, and that is the local representative um, here in Lovian. So you, we have constituency MSPs, uh, we, this church is placed in Edinburgh South, so Daniel Johnson is the local MSP, and then there are seven regional MSPs um, at present. So there's uh, three Conservatives, two Greens, and to Labour. I think that's the, the numbers that we ended up with back in May. And we are there to represent the people of Lovian. So that's quite a large area. So it takes in the whole of Edinburgh, uh, all of West Lovian, most of Mid Lovian, and Musselburgh in East Lovian. Um, so our job is, if people contact us, to try to help them on their way. And, and that actually is perhaps one of the most enjoyable parts of the job is that perhaps sadly um, a letter or an email from an MSP gets things moving quicker than a letter perhaps from Laird. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so um, obviously it gives us an opportunity to be able to kind of engage with people um, and help people. There has been definitely a change uh, before I became a um, an MSP. I, I was a local councillor here in Edinburgh, um, and even in the last, um, I suppose, 16, 17 years, there's been a massive change. So very few people now come to your surgery. So I hold surgeries uh, most Fridays uh, when Parliament is sitting, but almost everybody now contacts you by email, by telephone, um, and the days of even letter writing have gone. I think I could probably count even on my hand the number of letters that I've received um, in the last year. So everyone does it by email, everyone does it or, or, or by telephone. But that's a real opportunity. And you can see that you've made a difference from people, whether it's in regards to housing or education or um, other areas that people are struggling with. Uh, and I think it's really important that that link is kept. It's obviously easier for, in some ways if you're, you've got a smaller number, 72,000 people if you're a constituency MSP. But we have, I have an opportunity to do that. I suppose my second responsibility is that within uh, the Parliament itself in regard to what we see on television or what happens um, day by day in the Parliament. And I think, again, for me, although I've been involved in politics for quite a long time, I've been a councillor, certainly five years ago, it was, to me it was quite a big shock uh, about how the Parliament works and um, what you can do and what you can't do. And it probably took me about a year to really work out how it all worked together. Um, so we were in opposition. The party that I belong to is in opposition. I'm a backbencher, so obviously we're not deciding day-to-day -day policy. 
uh, we are there to some extent to scrutinize and to um, oppose. But that can, I think, be done in quite a constructive way as well. It's, it's, I don't think that's a negative thing that we do. I mean, uh, for most of us, what we see on television is um, Ruth Davidson or Douglas Ross or um, Patrick Harvey or whatever it is shouting at Nicola Sturgeon on a Thursday afternoon and Nicola giving very long answers with not much content behind it. <laughs> and, and, and that can give you quite a negative feel as to what goes on in Parliament. But actually, although we don't like to admit it too often, you do have to get on. You can't go and not get on with your colleagues, whichever party they are. Some are easier to get on with others, I'm sure they say that about me as well. But you do have to work together. And the majority of the work of the Scottish Parliament is done within committees, um, and you're on one or two committees, uh, and that's where the hard work, the scrutiny, the development has done that. And I suppose what I look back on over the last um, five years is looking back and see there are bits of legislation which I think will have helped people um, across Scotland. Um, the thing I think probably I am most pleased with is in regard to people who get social security benefits, who sadly have terminal illness. Uh, again, working with really cross-party groups across the whole of the Parliament uh, and with the government, we were able to change that so it's now a lot easier for people to get benefits um, if they have got uh, terminal illness to get it quicker and more efficiently. Um, I think we've just got past it and it'll be coming in towards the end of this year, but every new build, every redevelopment that is done um, of a certain size, we'll now have to have what we call a change in place toilet, which is a, a, a larger toilet, which has a shower and a changing room. So people who have got wheelchairs who need better um, areas to be able to do disabled toilets will have that in every development. So, for example, St. James Centre, the new St. James Centre has that, uh, the Scottish Museum has it, um, and a few other places are starting to come. So those are the kind of things that you can do day by day. It's perhaps not particularly political, perhaps not that sexy, but actually does make a difference, I think, to people's lives day in, day out. Um, within the Parliament, um, as I said, I think we do get on reasonably well most of the time um, together. It, it, it is interesting to see where we are in regard to our culture. Um, I think we have now reached a stage where the generation who are now in government or who are in opposition have had no contact with church throughout their life. So if you go to a previous generation, if you go to the kind of those who are maybe just retiring now, they would have had contact through Skype or Brownies or youth work or something. But it's interesting now talking particularly to the new intake who are in their kind of 30s, 40s. Almost none of them have any, had any positive contact with church in their life. And so we're living in a, in, in a different model for, I think, the church to operate. Um, there was a, an, a, an event two and a half years ago which brought together a number of uh, Christian charities, Evangelical Alliance, Bethany Christian Church, Blythewood, others, all came into Parliament and did an evening's presentation. Um, and it was interesting at the end talking to the, the minister who was responding on behalf of the government just to what was going on. She said to me at the end, she said, I just don't get it. I don't understand what you're really talking about. Which I find really interesting. That, you know, we, we live in our wee subculture, that we understand a lot of what goes on, but actually how do we now then engage uh, with um, government, with politicians, with civic society in a way that is constructive and that people can understand? And I think that is a, an interesting um, question which um, we all will have to grasp with. And I, and I think as a church, we will have to grasp with. Um, I could give my own views, but I'll do them for um, another day. But I, I, I do think we now re need to rethink um, where, where we are and what we're doing and what are we looking to achieve. And then finally, and then just briefly just to say 
what is likely to come up in, in the Parliament that might be of interest to us um, in the next uh, few years. Well, clearly, uh, recovery from, from COVID is going to be one of the key issues. How do we recover? How do we gain confidence again, both within our society? What will society look like? How are we going to make sure we don't leave people behind, whether through that's illness or economic? And I think that will be a real challenge uh, for both Westminster and for the Scottish Parliament. Um, it has been announced that there's likely to be a bill brought forward in regard to assisted suicide um, to allow people who want to end their life to be able to, to do that through um, a third party. Um, that will be introduced probably in the autumn and will come for its first big uh, vote towards spring, early summer next year. It's unclear how that will go because there's, there's 35, 40 new MSPs and because they haven't really been meeting together because of uh, social restrictions, it's difficult to know where, where, how they will vote or what they will vote on. Um, but I think that will be a big issue uh, going forward. Um, we've obviously got the whole environmental issues coming forward, which I think will be interesting and important, <coughs> again, uh, leading up to December and then beyond December. Uh, and no doubt other issues will come forward um, as well. But I think those are probably the key issues um, that we should be uh, praying about. And I'm very happy uh, to take any questions or comments if anyone has anything. If not, I can sit down and we can pray. I was thinking that if you don't want to wear a mask, you just now need to dance. So maybe you could have dancing during your service here and uh, on Sunday morning when you wouldn't have to wear a mask. Um, yeah, I mean, I think what I, what to some extent turns me off is the bulk email that comes in from 300 people, which is exactly the same wording. Um, it, it, it gives you a feel for maybe where an issue is, but it doesn't, I think, really necessarily engage. Um, I, I, I think Emails are important and, you know, all MSPs do read the emails and, 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 and we'll get a feel for that. Um, I think try to be positive in what you're trying to say rather than just negativity. Um, and don't ask for the moon. Try to be realistic if you're asking for something. But I, I, I think there's, there's sort of really two types of email. You know, if you were emailing me because you were having a, an individual issue, that would be dealt with differently to um, I don't want you to vote for X, Y, or Z. So there's definitely two different emails. Um, as I said, not many people go to surgeries. All MSPs have surgeries on a regular basis. You know, face-to-face -face can work. It's good to engage with people um, in, in that way. And, and I think don't do it at the last moment. Um, so often you get 150 emails the night before the actual debate. I, in reality, internal conversations happen a couple of weeks, two or three weeks before an issue comes up. Um, and unless it's a kind of moral issue such as, say, assisted suicide, um, on, on more other issues, there is a party whip. Um, and most of us will follow that whip unless it's something we feel very strongly against. Um, and that would be true for all of the five parties, we, we are all whipped to, to, to varying degrees. So, you know, engage at an earlier stage rather than, than, than a later stage. Yeah, I mean, school assembly still has to take place by law. It's one of the few things. Yeah, well, it, it, the, I mean, it's an interesting question, Matt, because, again, under, under the present statute law, 
it is meant to have a religious um, part to it. Um, and, and that will vary, you know, quite dramatically from school to school and from region to region. Um, I, I mean, I, I, I mean, I had assembly every day when I went to school. I, 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 I'm not quite sure what, I'm not sure the real benefit if it really did have of singing a, a, a hymn and having a prayer. Um, but, I, but I think one of the things we do need to look at is how the, we, we, we make sure that organi organisations like Scripture Union are still going into schools and are still being able to engage with the children. And there has been pushback from certain head teachers, certain schools in regard to that. And I think that is something that we have to make sure is, is, is still taking place and still being allowed. Um, but I, 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 I mean, again, just a wee bit like our politicians, you know, the majority of head teachers now, or teachers, will have very little understanding of the Christian faith. Um, and, and, I, and I'm not sure they are necessarily the best ones to be able to then explain that. I'm not sure it has got much better, um, if, if I'm absolutely honest. I mean, I think, you know, there are probably two kind of models which you could perhaps arguably take from certainly the Old Testament. You have the kind of um, Joseph Daniel individual who is at the heart of government, who is uh, seeking to influence from inside, and I think that is important and key, whether that is within the civil service, whether that's within um, MSPs, local councils, all that area. And then you have the kind of prophetic voice speaking into situations, your kind of Jeremiah's, your um, prophets doing that. And, and I think that probably still for me is a, is a good model. Um, I think for me, Christians generally um, are not that engaged in the political process. Um, historically, that is certainly been the case. I think the Free Church of the Denomination would be an exception to that. I think there's been a much better engagement, particularly in previous centuries, by Free Church, particularly in the Highlands, which hasn't happened within other evangelical denominations. Um, I think we concentrate on too few issues. I think there's one or two issues that we always bang on about and we don't talk about a wider issue. I mean, I personally, I mean, we, we will disagree necessarily of how that might work in practice, but it, it does seem to me quite strange that God's first commandment to Adam was to look after creation and to see creation develop and to look after the animals and to look after all that's created because it was good and yet, very often, the last people to talk about environmental issues is the evangelical church. And, and, and that, I think, has always been slightly, to me, I, I, I've never quite worked out why that has been the case. Now, how we want to advocate that and say that will vary, but I think at least we now see a tier fund starting to engage in a much more constructive way um, in regard to these issues, and I think that's something we can, we can learn from. So I think the issues that we, we talk about, um, and I think just how we express ourselves often, it has to be done in a godly way, in, 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 in a way that reflects God's love, Jesus' love to society, rather than being necessarily maybe just too hard in what we say.
No, 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 there are. Th uh, no, there, there are. Um, we meet once a month um, to pray together, uh, to read scripture and pray together. Um, uh, and that's both MSPs and MSPs um, staff and some within the Scottish Parliament itself. So, so, so that happens once a month and any, uh, that's very open if anyone's invited to that. So, and, you know, we do know each other quite well and it, it's a small enough place that you bump into people and can chat to people. So I think, I think there is that genuine support um, within it. Um, I, I, I'm part of Conservative Christian Fellowship. All the parties have a kind of wing to that, Christian wing to their parties. And again, that, that's an interesting place to engage and be able to talk to people about that. So no, I, 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 I personally don't feel that. I, mean, I think probably I feel more supported now than perhaps in, in, in previous roles. What do I like about it? What? I do, yeah, you do. I mean, I think the last 18 months for all of us has been really strange um, and it's definitely been less exciting than the first um, uh, few years within Parliament. I mean, I think it is, it is that, I mean, it, it does sound a bit pious, but actually it is that win for your constituent. It is that person being able to get into a school that they wanted to get into or that person getting the treatment within the hospital that, that they need. So I think those things do, do. Um, I think it's a great privilege, it is good fun. I mean, I naturally would, you know, debate with my shadow for as long as I want. So to, you know, to get paid to stand up and to debate and to be able to make changes, hopefully to society at some level, I think is a privilege. So yeah, absolutely. And you meet lots of interesting people. I mean, I think one of the great things, particularly within Lovian, um, is that you can kind of phone up anywhere and say, can I come and visit? And, you know, more or less you get invited. So that has been really interesting. You know, I've met some really interesting people, some quite inspiring people um, over the last three and a half years. And I think we can become very negative, you know, in life and society. But actually, as you visit, particularly the small charities who are just doing a particular work in a particular area, whether Christian or not Christian, and you just see lots of good stuff happening within our city. And I think sometimes, inevitably, as politicians and even as the media, we always want to pick up a negativity. But actually, there was lots of good stuff happening in our city. And I think, you know, we should be pleased with that and we should be encouraging that. And that should hopefully flourish. I think that will be the challenge again coming out of COVID is how do we regain that momentum of a lot of the good stuff that was happening, and, and how do we continue with that? Over here. <laughs>